students to your museum. Please show them the wonders of your world. Great! I'm on my way! I wonder where the children are. Let's see, where, where are they? Hmm, uh, that, that's a good question, Cock. Where are the children? I just asked that question, Spigot. If I had known where Anna and Peter were, I would not have said. I wonder where the children are. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Cock. Hello, Spigot. I wonder where the children are. They're late. Hello, children. You're late. I'm so sorry, Dr. Singh. Anna took the wrong bus, so she took ages to find me again. You caught the wrong bus? I'm sorry, Dr. Singh. My mind is preoccupied. Your spirit is low today, Anna. This is not like you at all. You're usually so... buoyant. Buoyant? Anna's a buoyant? No, not buoyant. Buoyant! That means to float, to be lifted up. Anna usually has such a uplifting spirit, such a buoyant spirit. Not today she doesn't. That's for sure. She's a real sinker. Thanks a lot, Peter. Come with me. Let's see what Professor Proof has to say about buoyancy. Come up here for a second. I want to tell you a little story. All right. I love stories. This is great. You mean you're not going to make me clean up any messes from those test tubes that exploded? I can't believe it. Green, slimy liquid everywhere. And the what walls... What mess are you talking about? I didn't blow up any science experiment. Oh. Skiddo. Have you been using my hey, new... Hey, Professor, weren't you just getting ready to tell me a story? Oh, oh, yes. But don't let me forget about that green slime. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sure, Professor. Oh, oh, Mr. Graphic! There once was a king who was very rich and loved to show off his wealth. So he ordered a new crown to be made for himself out of precious jewels and pure gold. Mm. But when the king received his new crown, something wasn't right. Ah. He had a feeling the goldsmith had cheated him out of his money and not used real gold. Mm. So the king called one of his wisest men, uh -huh. Archimedes, mm. to see if he could determine if the crown was pure gold. Yeah. Without harming the crown itself, of course. Well, Archimedes spent much time at home thinking about his problem and, and often forgot about other things he was doing. Well, one day, when he was getting ready to take a bath, he accidentally stepped into the bathtub full of water and it overflowed. And that is when he realized he had the answer about the gold crown. Uh, well... What does a bathtub have to do with a gold crown? Well, if you quit interrupting me, I will get back to that. The answer to that, of course, is buoyancy force. Buoyancy? Oh, boy, like I know what that is. Of course, you are the professor, and you know these kinds of things. Me, I'm just your little helper. Well, if you are through talking, that. could you get a glass of water? Oh, thanks, Professor, but I'm not thirsty. It was a nice offer, Not to drink, but as a science explanation. Yeah, I knew that. Um, uh, here you go, Professor. Here is your answer, right in front of you. I never knew I was drinking the answer. <laughs> well, that's what happens when I put the ice cubes in the glass of water. Mm -hmm. The water overflows. This is called displacement. Uh, what did you misplace? I thought you were talking about buoyancy. We are, but displacement and buoyancy go together. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Buoyancy is a force that pushes an object up in fluid, like this water. Yeah. Buoyancy pushes up while gravity pushes down. When you put an object in the water, it displaces or pushes the water out of the way. When I put the ice cubes in the water, the ice displaced or moved the water out of the way, like it was making a hole in the water. An object displaces as much as it weighs, and if the water that is pushed away weighs the same as the object, the object will float. Oh, oh, oh. So, when Archimedes Bless was you. I didn't sneeze. Oh, sorry. Well, when Archimedes stepped in the bathtub, it overflowed because his foot displaced or pushed away the water. Mm. Archimedes knew he could test the crown in water to see if it was real gold. He took a chunk of gold that weighed the same as the crown, and, and, and he knew to put the gold and the crown in the water so they could displace or push away the same amount of water. Mm. Remember, if something weighs the same as the water it pushes away, it will float. If not, it will sink. Well? Well, oh, oh, well, let's just say that the king had another crown made. A real gold crown. Boy, Professor, crowns, gold, bathtubs, water, gravity, force, weight. My head is floating <laughs> with all this stuff. Remember, when you see a boat floating in the ocean water, or see the ice cubes in the glass, it all has to do with buoyancy. Oh, that's sad about Anna. Anna? What is wrong with Anna? She has been porcupined. What? She said that her mind has been porcupined. And with those needles, that has to be painful. Not porcupined. Preoccupied, you ninny. What's preoccupied, you ninny? Preoccupied is when your mind is busy thinking about something other than what is going on right now. You ninny is what you are. A ninny. Oh! Oh, all right. Spigot, you are so stupid. You don't even know when you are being insulted. Oh, now I know what buoyancy is. It doesn't make me feel any lighter. Well, what's wrong, Anna? Oh, don't bother asking, Dr. Singh. I mean, we've already asked her like 20 times. Yeah. And? And I don't want to tell him. Tell them what? Well, it's my brother. He was arrested last night and accused of robbing a shop. <gasps> what? what? This is terrible. He didn't do it, though. He was in a taxi at the time of the robbery. Whoever robbed the shot must have looked like him. Well, this should be easy to straighten out. All the police have to do is locate the taxi driver and allow him to tell them where your brother was at the time of the robbery. They are looking for him, but have not yet found him. <sighs> oh, I feel like running away. Well, where would you run to, Anna? I don't know. Maybe one of the wonderful places Professor Louis visits. OK, let's go. Hello, Dr. Singh and children. You'll never guess where I'm going today. Well, maybe you can guess. Here we go. The size of this prowling city has forced people to find different ways to transport themselves. Even when traffic isn't that bad. The turbine is a popular item of clothing in this part of the world. The streets are crowded with people who are busy with their day's business while others are occupied with other types of work, like washing their elephant, charming a snake, or training their monkey to do flips. Kids here are like kids everywhere. They like to be on TV. In fact, some people will do funny things in order to be seen on TV. That's right, we are experiencing the sights in New Delhi, India. See you next time. Oh, oh, Anna, I've got your solution. What we do is when it's really dark, right, we break your brother out of jail. You are such an animal. <laughs> Who, me? Yes, you. Wow, that's pretty cool. 
I've never seen donkeys like that before. What do you mean donkeys? You know, they kind of look like horses. Static. How many times will you get these animals wrong? Those are different types of deer. Oops. That's alright. There are many types of hoofed animals in this world and it's easy to get confused sometimes. Honey? What is it? Have I ever told you you are a dear, dear friend? Speak it! Don't you understand that to be called a ninny is an insult? Of course I know that being called a ninny is an insult. I may not be brilliant like you, but I'm not stupid. Ha! You could have fooled me! I wish there was some way I could help my brother. As I said, we could try and break him out tonight. <laughs> Even I think that's a crazy idea. But what we could do is give him a gift. That would make him feel better while he was waiting to be cleared of these false charges. That's a great idea. What can I make him? Now, I had an idea for an art gift around here. Let's see, uh, ah, here it is. <laughs> Beat away. <gasps> a beaded necklace tonight. It's terrible what's happened to your brother, Anna. I mean, I knew him. He was a good person. Peter's right. It isn't fair that he has to go to prison for something he didn't do. That is sad. Unfortunately, there are lots of times when people have to go to prison for things that are not right. <sighs> Take our friend Jared, for example. Even he spent a night in prison. That's right, when the wicked King Haga captured him. <laughs> what's going to happen to him now? Let's find out. I never tire of reading this old book! Our story so far, Isabel was captured by the pirates, but then rescued by Jared and Professor Louis in the Peace Wind. The Peace Wind's force field was struck by lightning, which catapulted them into another world. Our heroes made friends with the Tamaling Prince, Rohanor, while the pirates discovered that Halgor the Horrible had rock robots with solid gold control domes. Isabel and Prince Rohanor were captured by the pirates and then handed over to Halgor the Horrible, who quickly sentenced Rohanor to death. Halgor betrayed the pirates, stole the Darkwind, and threw them into the dungeon. Prince Rohanor was set free in a daring rescue. The rock robot commanders pledged their support to Rohanor, and the Peace Wind escaped through the vortex, leaving Buffard behind in the hands of the wicked Halgor the Horrible. Jared attempted to rescue Bufford, but was captured in the process. Halgor's rock robot master control dome was damaged, while Dr. Kaldu attempted to make a rock robot master control dome for Prince Rohanor. We will need at least 200 rock robots to attack the castle. Rohanor? 
father says that he will be able to make the control dome. But it will take him two or three days to complete the modifications. Two or three days? I don't know if Jared will last that long. Why do you say that? Halgor has built a torture chamber deep in the dungeon. He has had much practice at making people suffer. We must hurry, then. He will tell Halgor all about our hiding places. We must attack at once. But we're not ready. If we attack now, we'll be destroyed. Jared will tell Halgor nothing. But how can you be so certain? I know Jared's heart. He loves Louis, Isabel, all of us. God will make him strong. He will resist unto his own death. I don't share your confidence, Your Highness. Samuth, when will you stop doubting the power of our God? God's own son Jesus suffered and died a terrible death after being tortured, and he did it out of love for us. It says in the Bible, for Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. You and your God, who can understand it? You can, Samuth. You see, our disobedience to his law demanded that we all die. It makes sense. If a man breaks the law of the king, he must pay the penalty. That's the law. But God did not want us all to die, so he gave his own son, Jesus, to die in our place. So your God was willing to sacrifice his son for our sins. Well, what has that to do with Jared being tortured by Halgor? Samuth, you still do not understand, do you? When you accept this God as your Lord, the spirit of his son, Jesus, comes and lives in your heart. He gives you peace in times of despair and courage in the face of danger. And he even fills your heart with a special love, a love that is willing to sacrifice all for friends and loved ones. Let's just hope Jared and his God do not let us down. Halgor the Horrible locked Jared into the torture chamber and pledged to torture Jared until he revealed the location of Prince Rohanor and the Peace Wind. Oh God, give me the strength, fill me with courage. Please, let me not betray my friends. Amen. A noble prayer coming from such a young boy. What? Who are you? I am Relenthor, King of Tomar. You're Prince Roanor's father? That I am. Who are you? Do you know my son? My name's Jared, and Roanor is one of my best friends. I've come to love him and his people. Then that explains why Halga has thrown you into the depths of his dungeon. How is my son? Is he well? I have not seen him for a long time. Ronor said it's been over three years. I've lost all sense of time. There is no way to tell whether it's day or night when you live in the darkness of the dungeon. Take courage, King Ralenthor. Your son is alive and well. He has rallied together a large army of faithful Tamarlings, and I'm certain, even this very moment as we speak, he's planning on destroying the power of Halgor the Horrible and returning you to the throne. But how? Halgo and his rock robots have gained immense power. Your Majesty, Prince Roanor has chosen to make the one true God his God. The power and wisdom of the God who created the universe is now living inside of him. I will assure you, what man or Tomalin cannot do, God can. Your confidence in this God is extraordinary. We have a book of writings called the Bible. In it is recorded that two of God's followers were arrested and thrown into jail for serving God. In the darkness of the night, while they sang praises to God, there was a great earthquake. Their chains fell from them, and the door to their cell swung open. That very night, God worked a great miracle and delivered them. I wish I could have your confidence and hope, but these years of living in the dungeon have drained me, and I am empty. I fear all is lost. Your Majesty, you must take heart. Believe in my God. Accept his Son as your Lord and you too can experience his love and power. And you say that my son has done this? Yes, your majesty. I trust the judgment of my son, and for some reason, don't ask me why, my heart tells me to trust you too. Tell me, Jared, what must I do? Simply believe in God. That's it, believe in God and proclaim his son Jesus as the Lord of your heart. This I will do. God, I don't know you, but I want to believe that you are who Jared says that you are. I need you. Jesus, become the Lord of my heart. 
Fill me with your love and power. So let it be said. So let it be written. The scientists of Halgor the Horrible repaired the damaged Master Control Dome in order to defeat the faithful followers of Ralanthor and Rohanor. Your control crown has been repaired to the best of our scientists' abilities. In other words, the idiots don't know whether it will work or not. Uh, well, uh, yes. What are you waiting for? Do something. Oh, uh, yes, Your Majesty. It works! It works! <laughs> Why are you destroying the rock robot? I didn't touch a thing. They're doing it to themselves, you idiot. This command crowd is still defective. I want this crown repaired by tomorrow. Heads will roll. I am surrounded by incompetent fools. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, your majesty. Ah, I think I will go to the dungeon and see if Jared is ready to give me what I want. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. So, you think this is a party, do you? And you didn't invite me. Shame. 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 Well, we'll see how much you feel like singing when I get through with you. Halgo, you can break my body. You might even break my mind, but you will never take away my joy. We will see about that. Ah! 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 Helga, stop! You call yourself a king? Stop this at once. Torture is not noble or worthy of any who would wear the crown of Tomar. Shut up, old man, or you will be next. So, Jared, are you ready to tell me where Roanor is hiding in the ruins? Well? <laughs> Christ also has once suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust. What foolishness is this? It's simple, really. Since his God has suffered for the sake of the forgiveness of our sins, because of his love for us, Jared will endure suffering out of his love for his friend. <laughs> I have never heard such foolishness. But if suffering is what he wants, then I will be more than happy to help him. Algor the Horrible tortured Jared until he passed out in pain. Meanwhile, back at the temple ruins, Rohanor gathered his followers and presented a plan to defeat Halgor the Horrible. Fellow Tamarlings and friends, the time has come to restore the kingdom. <laughs> Dr. Kaldu has completed the master control dome for the rock robots. He has altered all the other control domes, so they will no longer obey Halgor the Horrible, but will obey only us. But what about Jared? Don't worry, Isabel. Professor Cologne and I have been working on a way to rescue Jared. So, what say you? Are you ready to restore the kingdom? Jared, I am saddened that you will spend the rest of your life in the darkness of this dungeon. I have but a few years left. You have your whole life. 
does look awfully bleak. However, have you survived? It has been hard. Little or no food, horrible torture, no sunlight. It seems that we are without hope. But, Your Majesty, remember Jesus, who lives in us, can give us hope, even in these chains. I... I want to believe. I do believe that there is hope for my soul, but... Is there any hope of deliverance? Your Majesty, the Bible says in the Book of Romans, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Rohanor, his soldiers and his army of rock robots secretly travelled across the Badlands to the castle. They went there to reclaim the throne for the good people of Tomar. For God, his son Jesus, and for Tamar. Jared is so brave. How can he have so much hope while being in that little dungeon? He can be brave because his hope is in God, and God is greater than any prison. Yes, but he could die in that prison. For those who love God, death need not be feared. But why is that? Well, as a follower of Jesus once said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. What did he mean by to die is gain? For those like Jared who've given their lives to God, death is not something to be feared. For them, death is leaving this life and entering the presence of God. Goodbye, goodbye, see you. <laughs> Spigot, I I am sorry for calling you a ninny. Oh, that's all right, Calc. I forgive you. No, thank you, Spigot. Sometimes I think that I am a prisoner of my own pride. I I am not perfect, and I am afraid that people will laugh at me if they ever find out. You know, Calc, what you just said and did was very brave. Thank you.